book one, we receive an introduction to the main characters of the story. You'll notice that I list out just a few of them here. We have this wonderful illustration um, by Alice Neal, and these are unpublished illustrations. There's Theodore on the right, and then we supposedly have the three brothers, um, Yvonne and Alyosha. And actually, that's Smerdyakov on the far left. We don't have Dmitri in this picture, but we will come back to that later. So let's walk through our characters. Who are they, and how are they getting introduced to us? Well, first we have Dimitri. Dimitri is our romantic lieutenant. Um, his name means Mother Earth in Greek. And our first introduction to Dimitri is that he is the product of the first marriage of Theodore. And his mother really should have never married <laughs> Theodore. Um, when we first hear about Dimitri, we get to see um, that she is well off, that she was from a good family, and um, that she herself um, was marrying him out of rebellion, and which I think is important to remember. Adelaida Ivanovna. So she runs off and gets married to someone else. So she's already, we already have this triangle going on in, into which this boy is born. Um, also, she is somewhat of a romantic. She is eloping. Uh, she sees herself as part of this Shakespeare's Ophelia. Um, there's these, these ideas that she herself is this romantic, um, that she's beautiful, and uh, that she wanted to have this grand love story. And that's how we're introduced to Dimitri's mother. And so we get to see how he is by understanding his mother and then, of course, his father, which we'll get to in a second. But when we understand his mother, we get the sense that he's inheriting um, this romantic ideal. And then we'll get to know more about his conflict with his father. The next two children uh, come from the marriage of Theodore's second wife. And his second wife seems to almost have been kidnapped. <laughs> so we hear this picture on the left of Yvonne and Dimitri and Alyosha with just centering on Yvonne on the right. And uh, you already have a foretelling in that picture of Yvonne and his move towards the demonic. Um, but the mother that, that marries Fyodor, we don't even know how this ever happened, <laughs> to be realistic. I, it does seem like she's kidnapped. Um, the word innocent is repeated over and over again when describing her that she was young. She was 16 when she was kidnapped, basically, from her benefactress and marries Fyodor. She has innocent eyes that cut Theodore's soul like a razor. And then he would say this and then have a disgusting little snigger. Um, so people don't know whether he has an attraction to innocence or just his sensuality coming forth. And this is going to be a constant concern with, with Theodore. We'll look at him in a second. But um, Yvonne and Alyosha are the two boys that come out of this relationship. Now Yvonne comes out and he is proud and uh, he knows that they are living off the uh, beneficence of other people and he doesn't like his situation and so he works as hard as he can from an early age to try to make it in the world on his own. He's very independent. He is a natural science, scientist, natural philosopher, um, and he's studied the ways of the world. He's very empirical in the way that he thinks about things. He is our rationalist. Uh, Ivan in Russian is just like the name John. It's just like John Doe. So he is our everyman. So there's some sense in which we as readers are supposed to associate with him, that he is our enlightenment figure. Um, that He has inherited the same kind of paradigms that we've inherited uh, to understand the world through science and through rationalism, to take it apart and see how it works. And this is going to come up in his character as well. And then Alyosha. So Alyosha is our hero. He's the youngest. He's the third son in this um, from Fyodor. And we're introduced to him from the beginning with this great memory that he has, that he uh, remembers his mother holding him before an icon and in this moment of being held before the icon, the slants of light that come in on his face. And he remembers that his whole life. And I think we're supposed to hold this memory as well. Um, this memory of her holding him up almost as she's giving him away. Like, 
like Hannah giving her son Samuel back to the church. Um, he remembers this light of love, right? That's the way that he describes it. Um, it seemed to be a slanting rays of a setting sun, an open window, a lighted oil lamp in front of the icon and his mother on her knees and sobbing with shrieks and cries, seizing him in her arms and hugging him so tightly that it hurt and pleading for the mother of God and holding him out from her embrace with both arms towards the icon as if under the protection of a mother of God. It's a beautiful opening picture. Um, he remembers his mother and he remembers her face. And so we have this zealous mother of faith that stays in his mind. And so what we have in contrast between Alyosha and Yvonne, Yvonne grows up unhappy that he has been under other people's generosity. And he, Alyosha is holding on to the memory of his mother and being under the protection of the mother of God um, and feeling that light on his face. And so they're growing up with two very different um, dispositions. Ali, uh, Alyosha's name actually means like of God and um, he's dedicated in this way. You'll hear throughout the text that people even call him like an angel, right? That he is in some ways becomes this messenger figure in the text. Uh, and yet he's not, he's not introduced to us without fault. So we all also have to get a sense that he's not without fault here. Um, and nor should we consider him uh, as perfect. He's not introduced to us as perfect either. So something to be considered. Um, and then there's Fyodor. <laughs> Fyodor Karamazov is introduced as, um, from the beginning, with a dark and tragic death, which happened 13 years ago. There's our Edgar Allan Poe opening. He was a landowner, though he hardly ever lived on his estate. He was strange. He was precisely the type of man who was not only worthless and depraved, but muddle-headed as well. One of those muddle-headed people who still handle their own business deals quite skillfully, if nothing else. So he's manipulative. He's a mover. Um, he's depraved and worthless. And yet, at the end of this first section where we're introduced to Fyodor after he loses Adelaida, we have this conflicting account where people don't know how to view him. When she dies, he, he apparently runs down the street drunk, lifting his hands to the sky with joy and shouting, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. Which of course is nonsensical, nonsensical biblical um, reference right, to Simeon getting to see Jesus being brought um, into, the, into the church for circumcision, or not, for the 40-day blessing. Uh, others say he wept and sobbed like a little child, so much so that they say he was pitiful to see how repulsive they found him. And then here's the interesting part. Both versions may well be true. That is that he rejoiced at his release and wept for her who released him, and at the same time, in most cases, people, even wicked people, are far more naive and simple-hearted than one generally assumes, and so are we. And here we have the narrator talking to us. And what we get from the beginning then, as we're introduced to all these characters, is we have Fyodor, Dmitri, Ivan, and Alyosha, and all of them have both a generousness or a goodness that's possible, as well as a depraved uh, sensuality within them. Uh, that there is this, as Dimitri will later refer to it, a battlefield in the human heart between God and the devil. And who do you choose to follow? Uh, what do you choose to embrace? And it's after these introductions that we are introduced to Father Zosima. Now, Father Zosima is introduced before we get to book two, at least by reputation. Um, we get to hear about the elder Zosima, and here is a, um, an icon about Elder Zosima. Let me tell a little bit about what elders are by the words that Dostoevsky uses. Elders in the monastery are, uh, this is instituted back, they said, uh, Sinai, Athos, they've existed for a thousand years, and uh, the elders are those who have a certain level of authority in the monastery. Um, an elder is one who takes your soul, your will, into his soul and into his will. Who takes your soul, your will, into his soul and into his will. What we have in the beginning of this book then is uh, an opposition between 
Father Zosima, and Father Theodore. If we look at the opening of the novel, we have these two fathers being pitted against one another. Father Theodore, the three sons, and then Father or Elder Zosima. And these brothers, in a sense, must choose between these father figures, between these authorities. And that's how the novel opens. <laughs>